Well, uh, now we'll turn our attention to the other candidate. Who is Donald Trump and is he really the hugely successful businessman he claims to be? Well, one man, Tim O'Brien, made it his mission to try to find out when he wrote the biography Trump Nation. And I spoke to him yesterday evening and started by asking him about the allegation made in his book that Donald Trump's wealth is actually, or was actually then, only about 5% of what Mr. Trump was claiming. And that actually came out in court, too. You know, we litigated. Uh, he sued me for the book. And um, during the course of a deposition in that case, we produced um, audits from his own bankers that estimated that his wealth was uh, less than a tenth of what he said it was at the time. He spent, he spent many, many years inflating many, many aspects of his life, whether it's his business record, his wealth, um, his policy acuity. There's that's just part and parcel of the world of Donald Trump. So uh, just on the numbers there, so we're talking about your, your best guess, and you had quite a lot of access, didn't you, to some of the key figures around him, was that he was worth about a, a quarter of a billion. Still a lot of money, but $250 million. And he was uh, going around stay, saying that he's worth about $6 billion. That's That's correct at the time. More recently, uh, recall that when he announced his run for, for the presidency, he said he was worth about $8.7 billion. And then less than a month later, that number had magically grown to $10 billion. So presto, within about a month, he added $1.3 billion to his net worth. Um, my colleagues at Bloomberg Business Week have estimated that his wealth now may be around $2.7 billion. But the issue is um, he never puts out what, what he owes, what his debts are. He puts out inflated estima estimates of what his assets are worth, but he keeps all of his debts behind the scenes. And you can't really know what anyone's worth unless they're completely transparent about their debts as well. I'm getting closer to an overall question about his character, but not yet, because I want to throw into the mix before we get there, the access you had and the relationship you built up with Donald Trump while you were writing the book, while you were researching it. We spent quite a bit of time together. I flew with him on his jet to Los Angeles, cross country, back and forth. We flew down to his estate in Mar-a-Lago. I had dinner with Melania and Donald in Mar-a-Lago. Uh, I was in his apartment, in his offices. He called me several times a week for a long period of time just to check in. I don't actually think I'm unusual in that regard. He loves the press. Uh, but I did get unusual access for the book and I spent quite a bit of time with him on the book. And, um, you know, there's, there's many faces of Donald Trump. The Donald Trump that you see uh, in person is a different character from the Donald Trump you see on a stage or a, a Donald Trump who's campaigning for president. But then the attempt to strong arm you and ended up in court, as you described, you wouldn't be the first. No, I wouldn't be the first. I mean, he's used, uh, you know, the threats of lawsuits repeatedly, I think, to quiet the media, uh, to go after his business competitors, uh, more recently to silence women who've come out and uh, alleged that he sexually abused them. Um, he's used the courts in a fairly frivolous and um, uh, haphazard way uh, to try to intimidate people. But some would say it's just unpredictability, and that's uh, perhaps sometimes not a bad quality in a president if you're dealing on the international stage with people like President Putin and Xi Jinping. Well, you know, I don't I actually think unpredictability is a very bad quality in a president. You know, you've got someone in Donald Trump who said that he's willing to rearm South Korea with nuclear weapons, Japan with nuclear weapons. He's played fast and loose with uh, our relationship with NATO. Um, I don't think voters want someone who has their finger on the nuclear button to be unpredictable. I think they want someone who's mature, self-possessed. Uh, strategically disciplined and emotionally disciplined. And I wouldn't say any of those attributes apply to Donald Trump. And just last question, Tim, just to explain to uh, viewers in the UK how, I mean, okay, we've uh, found out perhaps that his wealth isn't as much as he claims. He's still worth an awful lot of money, whatever it is. How does he connect? How has he connected so effectively, particularly with those blue collar workers, many of whom are so angry because they haven't got anything and he's got the gold-plated jets and the rest of it. 
Well, that, that's a great question. I think that gets to the core of his presidency. I think he's connecting to the same, the voters that he's connecting to are the same people that were uh, fans of The Apprentice. He has represented uh, for a long time this ideal of, of someone who's an entrepreneurial success and a business success. Now we know that, that a lot of that is artifice and there's a, there's a lot of Oz behind the curtain uh, in, 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 the, in the world of Donald Trump. Um, the reality is he hasn't been a very successful businessman. He's been a very successful self-promoter. But I think when he came into this campaign, um, he located very early on a lot of understandable anger among white working class males who've been dislocated uh, by deindustrialization, who are still living through a lot of the impact of the 2008 financial crisis, where uh, they don't feel that their jobs are secure, their mortgages aren't secure, their children's futures aren't secure, and they feel uh, ignored. They feel ignored by uh, establishment media, establishment business, and establishment politicians. And Trump really tapped into that anger. And I think had he been a different person, had he been a more capable person, he could have used the advantages that he had gained from appealing to that group of voters by actually building a political movement around it. Um, but because he's so wildly ignorant of public policy and so self-absorbed that he's unable to build teams, he hasn't built the kind of campaign around that movement that a more capable politician might have. Tim O'Brien, good to get your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.